okay, it, it's gone on too long. You're going to have to talk about Catherine now because that's the perfect segue. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, I think we've talked about TDM1 already uh, and the fact that it's an antibody drug conjugate. Catherine, I really think, was a very beautiful trial design. Um, and it, it was beautiful because it asked that question and defined a high risk patient population in a way that was different than before. Um, before, we were always defining patients that were high risk based on how big their tumors were or um, whether they were node positive. And Catherine uh, asked that question a little bit differently. Instead of worrying about how much disease they had to begin with, they focused their design on patients that had residual disease at the time of surgery. So regardless of whether they were lymph node positive to begin with or negative, if that patient had residual disease in the breast or the lymph nodes after neoadjuvant therapy at the time of surgery, then they were eligible to go on to the Catherine trial. And so I think, um, by defining a high-risk population that didn't respond the way we wanted it to, to good therapy, we were able to really capture this true high-risk uh, population. You know, we've, we've kind of discussed and alluded to before that even patients with big tumors that may be lymph node positive in HER2 positive disease often get pathologic complete responses. And so those were probably diluting the effects and the magnitude of benefit from some other studies. And so Catherine uh, randomized uh, women to either receiving standard uh, therapy, um, which, you know, is interesting because it was right around that pertuzumab time. Um, but, you know, most often that was really trastuzumab in the adjuvant setting um, or TDM1. And that was for a continuation of a full year of therapy, just like we would have given for trastuzumab. And we saw a very impressive um, benefit in disease-free survival over 10% there. Uh, it was 11% and increased uh, disease-free survival from 77% up to 88% with the addition of TDM1. And so, you know, I think um, it's not often in uh, this uh, decade, at least, that we kind of get the gasps when we see the data. And a lot of time that's because it's uh, published online ahead of the presentation. Um, but I think that this was really impressive data. And I think it surprised a lot of people. Uh, one, um, maybe how poor patients did that didn't have a pathologic complete response, but also when we often uh, measure our benefits in the two or three or 4% range these days to see that magnitude of benefit of 11%. Yeah, and, and again, patient selection is everything. We knew that that was a high risk population. And so choosing and designing the trial that way, I think was very smart, very, relevant and then honestly at the end of the day practice changing because of such a significant approach. So clinically, I follow that Catherine thinking um, for anyone I treated neoadjuvantly, regardless of what chemotherapy, regardless of what HER2 regimen they received, if they, regardless of their, cl their clinical staging prior to surgery, if they did not achieve a pathologic complete response, I offer um, TDM1 in the adjuvant setting for those patients. Uh, the Catherine uh, trial did do 14 doses of TDM1 in the adjuvant setting, and they used it concurrently with radiation, which is a question that comes up a lot. Um, so I just want to draw the listener's attention to that. Yeah, and additionally, um, you also can start your endocrine therapy during that time period. So I agree. I think, you know, two frequent questions that are found in the appendix is that uh, radiation and endocrine therapy could be concurrent for those patients that that's appropriate for. Um, so, you know, tell me about the optimal patient selection to use, Catherine. You know, how do you explain that risk-benefit ratio? Uh, how do you explain the side effects? Uh, what does that conversation look like in your clinic? Yeah, so I prepare patients from the very beginning when we're starting neoadjuvant chemo that one of the reasons to choose a neoadjuvant approach is that it gives us, I call it the pivot, it gives us an opportunity to pivot, um, that if they don't have a pathologic complete response, we can say, oh, we've got this other road we can go down. And, you know, compared to trastuzumab alone, does TDM1 have some differing side effects? Absolutely. Um, but I think that with an 11% benefit that we've seen that most patients are willing to accept those different side effects. And we've already alluded a little bit to the TDM1 side effects, a little bit more liver function abnormality, a little bit more thrombocytopenia. Um, although patients will get hair growth on TDM1, I do find it's a little bit slower than patients that are um, just on trastuzumab. Um, we also, again, I've seen patients have some acceleration of their peripheral neuropathy when they're on TDM1 in the adjuvant setting. 
So I look at the, the depth of their pathologic response. I've had a handful of patients who maybe have two millimeters of residual disease. And in that two millimeters, there's only 10% cellularity. And is that really a pathologic complete response? No, but is the benefit of Catherine for that patient maybe a little bit more nuanced? Absolutely. So, you know, there's still art to oncology, obviously. And so some of those, those very good, but not quite pathologic complete response patients, we have a more detailed discussion. But most of my patients know that that pivot is coming and are ready for it um, and, and do great on the medicine. Yeah, absolutely. You know, did you, um, were you able to see the updated data um, from 2020 here um, breaking out if there was a population that didn't benefit from the Catherine regimen? Yeah, and that, that presentation reminded me so much of the subset analysis that we saw on who benefits from CDK46 inhibitors, where Absolutely. every slide it's, well, what about this group? What about this group? What about this group? And the answer is, nope, give it, give it, give it. Right. So, so uh, we, they looked at, you know, does tumor size, does lymph node status, does patient age, does hormone receptor status impact benefit of, of Catherine? And the answer was, everyone seems to benefit. And perhaps most interestingly, they also did some, some repeat HER2 expression. And even patients that had a diminished HER2 expression still benefited. And so I, I really think that, that it's a worthwhile conversation for any patient who did not have a uh, pathologic complete response. 